Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, we had the draft lottery go take place. And, well, let's just say we saw some interesting reactions from Knicks fans. <laughs> I'm sure Stephen A. will be grumbling quite a bit on first take today. But, um, I will kind of start off this video by saying I'm not a huge draft expert by any stretch. Obviously, I'm not an expert at all. I just like talking about basketball. But the draft is one place I'm still having a really hard time figuring out. But I still want to talk about it because I think it's pretty interesting. So the Timberwolves get the first pick. Congrats to Timberwolves fans. Um, our neighbors to the west here in Wisconsin. Um, I think Anthony Edwards is the best fit here, but... I also think that trading this pick could be a good move for them. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Maybe they could trade for Bradley Beal. That's kind of the first guy that comes into my head. Maybe Devin Booker, but I don't feel like the Suns are going to want to part with him after how successful they were in the bubble. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens there. But... Uh, congrats to the Timberwolves fans because getting the first pick is never a bad thing. Um, the Warriors got the second pick, and I feel like this is definitely going to get traded. Otherwise, they could take a Kung Wu, but we can, and obviously they could take Wiseman too. But I'm higher on a Kung Wu just because we've seen more from him, and I also think there's more potential for him to play a bit of the four than there is for Wiseman to play two positions, which is always important in the positionless NBA. So, um, but I think the Warriors will trade that. They'll find a, a good trade to make happen. I was kind of thinking about it, and it's kind of a bummer that the Pistons didn't hang on to Andre Drummond because I feel like a trade of the eighth pick and Andre Drummond, or not the Knicks, the Pistons. Uh, so the seventh pick and Andre Drummond for the second pick. Could be something interesting, but obviously they don't have Drummond anymore, and I'm not sure that would even work for the Warriors with their insane cap. So another trade I heard was Mitchell Robinson in the eighth pick for the second pick for the Warriors. And I think the Knicks would maybe do that just because they would value getting LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards over having Mitchell Robinson just because of the position they play. But... Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there with that Warriors pick. I'm really not sure what some trade targets for them are yet, but we'll have to wait and see on that. I'm sure we'll hear some rumors soon. Oh, and I want to say I'm not doing a mock draft right now. I'm just kind of giving my early thoughts. I still think I need to do a lot more research before I can do a mock draft, but maybe I'll be able to come out with that in the next week. Uh, the Hornets are drafting third, so I think that they will probably take one of Anthony Edwards, Lomelo Ball, and James Wiseman because Mitch Kupchak, their general manager, was quoted saying that he doesn't think they're in a position where they can draft um, a player of a position of need, which means they're not just going to focus on the center spot. They're going to draft best available, which would probably be in terms of potential, and that team needs to go for the home run swing because they just need that one star player to build around because they have a lot of good future starter level players that they can surround their star with. They just need to find a star, and it's Charlotte, so the best way they can do that is through the draft. The Bulls are drafting fourth. Pretty exciting for them. Um... Although it's kind of a weird spot for them also because I'm not real sure what they're going to want to do with this pick. I think that Okoro here is a stretch. I don't know how great Avdia fits with them, but that is another possibility. Otherwise, they could trade down a bit to, I don't know, maybe the Knicks want to trade up to four. Although I can't really think of why. Maybe the Knicks trade up to Jeff Killian Hayes. I'm higher on Killian Hayes and Onyeka Kongwu than most are, and I'm probably a bit lower on um, James Wiseman, and I'm definitely really low on Cole Anthony. I'm not sure that he's an NBA player ever, but 
other than maybe a microwave off the bench, but his, I don't know if he can play point guard off, if he can be a backup point guard. So is he a six foot two shooting guard? I just have questions there. So uh, I've got him out, out of the lottery for sure. But back to the, to the Bulls. Yeah, that's an interesting spot for them. Not real sure what they'll do there. The Cavs at five. That's another weird spot. Trade down possible. Otherwise, they'll take probably Denny Avdia or uh, Okoro. I'd like Okoro better for the Cavs because he's a better defender than Avdia. Although Avdia would also make sense because he can handle the ball a bit. And... Um, a Coro might be more of a four than a three. So they might like Denny there better for that reason too. I think you can almost pencil in Terry's Halliburton to the Hawks. I think that's a perfect fit with Trey Young. And I think that uh it's 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 a really good fit and I'd love to see it happen. Uh the Pistons at seven. I feel like if Killian Hayes is still on the board here, that's a no-brainer for them. Otherwise, Obi Toppin's a weird fit with Christian Wood. And I'm really high on Obi Toppin. I just don't really see a great falling spot for him at the top of the draft. Maybe the Timberwolves want to draft him number one overall, but I feel like that'd be a stretch. Um, the Bulls with Obi Toppin, that's a weird fit with Markin in. Um... Obviously, the Warriors and Hornets will probably draft. Well, the Warriors will trade their pick. I feel like it'll be for someone who's interested in LaMelo Ball and has a contributor to give up. I thought of Blake Griffin, but I don't know if they their cap can afford that. And I'm not even sure if they'd want to do that. Uh, and then the Hornets wouldn't take Obi because um, I feel like they'll just take a higher potential guy. But I think Obi's going to be really good, a really good player. So he'd be a good fit with the Knicks at 8. I know a lot of people want the Knicks to take a point guard, but they can address that next year in the draft, or they can sign a a decent free agent. Obviously, Fred Van Vliet to the Knicks makes a lot of sense. So I'd like to see them draft Obi Toppin. The Wizards at 9. Um, maybe if a Kung Wu is still on the board, but I don't think he should be because I think a Kung Wu has really good he could be really good, especially if he can develop a jump shot and gain the ability to play the four and the five. I think he could be a DeAndre eight and level center. So I really hope that he goes higher in the draft. But if the Wizards get him at nine, absolute steal. If he's not still there, I think they take um, Devin Vassell. If um, Okoro is still there, they'll probably take him. Uh, the Suns at 10, I'd, I'd like to see them take Kira Lewis. I think that he'd be a great falling, uh, a great spot. They'd be a great spot for him, excuse me. Um, I don't think he's ready to start day one, but I think he'll be ready to start very soon, which is perfect for the Suns because they have Ricky Rubio. They need a backup point guard. Kira Lewis is ready to play as a backup now. So he can step in. Rubio can mentor him a little bit and develop him. And by the time Rubio's contract runs out, I think there's two more years on it, um, Kira Lewis will be ready to step into the starting role. So I think he's a really good fit with the Suns, and I'd love to see them draft him at number 10. The Spurs are another kind of weird spot. I'm not really sure what they're going to want to do with this pick. Maybe they'll take a wing like Aaron Nesmith. Devin Vassell, if he's still on the board. Um, a guy like that. Otherwise, could they... I don't think they'd go guard. So maybe they take a big guy like um, Precious Achua or Isaiah Stewart out of Washington. But, yeah, that's an interesting spot for them, and I'm not real sure what they'll want to do with that pick. Uh, the Pelicans at... Or the Kings are at 12, Pelicans are at 13, I believe. Uh, the Kings, um, I think they might just take the best player available here. Maybe they would go and take a, a center, 
Um, I've heard a lot of people saying that they need a center, but I think that Rashawn Holmes is pretty capable of playing that spot, and backup centers are not real hard to find, so I don't think they should draft a center, especially because drafting centers in general is not great unless you think they have star potential, which is why I like Akungwu so much, because I think he can be really good. But um, maybe they take a wing, uh, Aaron Nesmith, Patrick Williams kind of guy. Um, uh, Sadiq Bey could be another name or own there. The Pelicans, I think, are in kind of the same boat as the Kings. They could maybe use a backup point guard, so maybe Cole Anthony does fall on the lottery and go there. Maybe that's a RJ Hampton falling spot. Maybe Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, I'd kind of like to see Tyrese Maxey in New Orleans. That'll That's another interesting pick. Not real sure what they'll do. And then the Celtics at 14. I think they should go for the home run swing. I think this is the perfect set, uh, falling spot for Pokusevsky. I think that's his name. Alex Sej Pokusevsky. The Greek guy who plays for Giannis' old team. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my early thoughts on the lottery. I'm going to do a lot of reading, watch a lot of film, and I'm going to try to come out with a mock draft sometime next week. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again sometime very, very soon.